What's up, everybody? Um, clearly, I'm not here. I'm, I'm at my house. I am uh, a little under the weather. So, just wanted to drop this video uh, so you guys can finish up those terms on, on the board. A uh, couple things here before we get started. Some housekeeping notes. Because this week is not going the way that, that I had intended for it to work, um, I am going to have you guys watch this video today. Um, anything that you don't finish watching, uh, I'm asking that you pick up wherever you left off on, on the block day. After you guys get done with it on the block day, I'm going to make available a, a review game uh, for you guys to, to, to make sure that you guys feel good uh, about, the, about the test. Um, block day was supposed to be the test, but because I'm not here and things are weird, um, I am going to push it to Friday, all right? Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, um, shoot me a message on, on Itzel and I'll try to make the world right. Cool. So, um, let's see what we got here. So, still on the board, we've got a, I don't know if everybody got, got done with Maryland and, and the fundamental order, so I'm going to recap that stuff. We're then going to talk about Puritan naysayers and Roger Williams and Ann Hutchison. Uh, we'll talk about an attempt to maintain control by the Puritan church. That would be the halfway covenant. Um, we will engage in more relationships with, with Native Americans. I think we know how that's going to roll, but that's King Philip's war. Um, and then we will talk about really kind of the socioeconomic makeup of, of the colonies. Um, we'll talk about, you know, how there really was a divide between those who have and those who have not. Um, and, and that's going to create uh, a little bit of, of chaos that we'll see in, in Bacon's Rebellion. We're going to create Pennsylvania. We're going to go back and, and uh, watch Massachusetts lose its charter. Um, and, and, and we'll talk a little bit about Salem Witch Trials. Uh, and then we'll head south, talk about the Carolinas, um, you know, a lot in the slave trade, uh, Georgia, and, and we'll finish it up with a little more religion in, in the Great Awakening. All right. Um, all that, that'll cover up the rest of these standards as well as everything here in, in Standard 2. I'm just going to move right ahead. I think that we've covered this with with some pretty solid, Ooh, there we go. Yeah, cool. Um, Maryland, uh, I think I got through this with every class, uh, but if not, then, then that's fine, we'll hit it again. Uh, Maryland, Maryland was created by a guy named Sir Lord Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore was a prominent British Catholic, um, and I wanna say it was 1634, I think the date's on the board there. Um, I have no notes, so this is all rolling from the brain. Um, he creates it uh, for for Catholics. Um, it is it, it's going to create an exodus of of English Catholics looking for a place to get away from from the tyranny and the oppression of 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 the king. Um, Maryland was was set up as as a as a feudal system or a feudal estate uh, for Catholics at the top. Uh, the economy was a plantation economy run off the back of indentured servants. Um, indentured servants are were typically uh, indentured to a person for the going rate was about seven years, um, and and and. You know their their life was not nice. It was not a good time for for an indentured servant because they had a shelf life, and and so you didn't really have to take care of them, and you could really work them. Um, however, Maryland uh, was it, it's a middle colony, and and so it it, it is going to bring diversity, uh, largely off the back of what we were calling the Act of Toleration. The Act of Toleration said, while we're setting this place up for Catholics, um, we will tolerate any religion. Um, and so it's going to bring a wide range of, of, of different people looking for, looking for that chance uh, to, to practice whatever religion they wanted. Going back to New England. 
uh, going back to New England, um, you know, the Puritan experiment as it was, uh, was, was, was building fast. Um, lots and lots of, let me see if I can, I can't really do it. Um, lots of people are, are, are coming into, use my pointer here. A lot of people are filling up this, this Massachusetts Bay, and as they're coming in, they're moving across. Um, once they get here to the Connecticut River, um, Reverend Thomas Hooker is going to lead uh, people south um, and establish uh, Hartford and New Haven. There we go. Um, Hartford and New Haven. Um it is more of the Puritan experiment. Um, they're not letting in any non-Puritans. Um, they are going to create, though, the, the fundamental orders of Connecticut, which is, is more that cutting-edge enlightenment stuff. Um, what the fundamental orders did was draft a, a, a modern constitution. Um, drafted a modern constitution and and what I want you guys to write down is the working definition of a constitution. A lot of people get twisted as to what's in a constitution, what it is, um, and so I want to kind of settle that right now. A constitution defines the relationship between government and its people, all right? Again, it defines the relationship between government and its people. It says, this is what government is, and this is how you're going to interact with the people. Um, this is, is, is truly cutting-edge stuff. Um, it is enlightenment theory being put into practice. Um, and, and it's going to be the first time, at least in the Western Hemisphere, that, that we see this, this take place. All right? Now, um, the, the Puritan lifestyle was difficult. Uh, it, it had some really stiff demands that, that were difficult for people to live up to, especially because a lot of these people, you know, a lot of them, especially if you're away from, from what are, are the major port towns, you're, you're trying to survive. Um, there's not a lot of thriving going on. And so, you know, trying to meet the demands of the Puritan church and, and well, survive in itself is going to create a lot of disenchantment amongst people. All right. Um, the first person that we have is a Puritan naysayer, people who just couldn't dig the way that it was going on. One was Roger Williams. Okay. Roger Williams was an extreme separatist, um, and, and he was a preacher, um, but he started to get in the hot water with some of the stuff that he was saying. Um, one of the things he said was that, um, that the, the charter that, that all of this Puritan experiment was created on was illegal because it took land from the natives without just compensation. As soon as you start saying that, a lot of the Puritan high heads are going to, to start to question, you know, his 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 intent uh, behind saying that, um, and 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 then he is going to. Um, oh, my bad, I'm I got a sick brain. I'm coming, I'm kind of blanking out here. Um, anyway. Roger Williams, uh, he says a lot of inflammatory stuff that kind of goes against that Puritan doctrine, and and they're going to try to put his head on a platter. Um, Roger Williams is going to run away. Okay, Roger Williams is going to run away to Rhode Island. All right, he is going to run away to Rhode Island right here. Okay, he's going to run run to right there. Um, Rhode Island had not yet been inhabited, um, and, and Roger Williams is going to run there, um, and, and as soon as he gets there, he's going to create his own church. Roger Williams creates the first Baptist church in, in what we consider mainland USA, all right? Um, now, it's going to be a really, really attractive for other Puritan, you know, all the Puritan runaways from all my classes. It's going to be real attractive because he says you don't have to take an oath uh, to the church. Um, there is not mandatory attendance. And of course, he wants people to come as frequently as possible, uh, but but it's not mandated. Um, he says it's all love, baby. And, and you know, when you can get here, you know, I, Roger Williams, will be here with, with open arms.
um, it's going to attract a lot of people, um, and it's going to kind of give a different look. Now, Rhode Island is is quickly going to become for for New England, and again, remember it's the most homogenous region. But Rhode Island's quickly going to become the most liberal of 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 the New England colonies. Um, the rest of New England doesn't really dig it. Um, they're going to call it the the sewer. They're going to say it's full of the Lord's debris, but. Roger Williams and and his and uh, not his Catholic his uh, his Baptist Church are going to be real real popular um, amongst people who who just can't fit into that mold that is is being demanded by guys like John Winthrop and and uh, and and the uh, you know the, the 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 general court right now um, another one of the Puritan naysayers is Ann Hutchison. Okay, Ann Hutchinson, I guarantee you, will be on the EOC. All right, Ann Hutchinson was a strong-willed mother of fourteen. Um, yeah, for sure, fourteen kids. Um, she is really going to be an iconoclast for for the time period. An iconoclast is somebody who kind of goes against what is 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 normal or what is culturally. Uh, acceptable. Uh, women are to be seen and not heard in, in this time, and your job is to take care of the house and, and make babies. Um, and and definitely not to question Puritan doctrine, definitely not to go out in the streets and, and engage in, in religious debate. Uh, but that's what Anne's going to do. Um, Anne's going to go out in the street. She's going to uh, you know, throw shots at, at the general court. She says that, um, uh, you know, a, a, that, that, that they're not living a good life. Um, sure. They're seen as these righteous and pious individuals, she says, but really they're corrupt. Um, she is, is also going to say that you don't need to follow, um, you know, man's laws. She says, you know, pick up a copy of the Bible and, and read it yourself and, 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 and live by those words. Uh, because really, you know, uh, th there's a lot of parallels between Anne Hutchison and, and say Martin Luther, um, you know, maybe not 90, whatever odd issues, but she definitely has enough that it's going to draw attention to her. Now, um, the general court's going to pull her in, in and, and put her on trial, and they're going to ask her, and why do you do what you do? You know, why are you going out there and, and, and trolling cats, basically? Why are you trolling dudes in the middle of the street and, and, and questioning their own faith uh, or encouraging them to question their faith? And, and she blows them out of the water when she says that she does it because God told her to. Um, uh, man, it, it, that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. You know, in, in, in this time period, God would never speak to a woman. Um, and so she's going to get kicked out. Uh, she's going to get kicked out of, of Massachusetts and she's going to run away to, you guessed it, to, uh, Rhode Island. Okay. She's going to run off to Rhode Island. Um, and, and she's going to live and breathe on that EOC forever. Um, so, you know, make sure that, that you feel good, uh, about both Anne and Roger, um, and, and how they're questioning the, the ethos, if you will, of, of the Puritan doctrine. All right. King Philip's war. All right. King Philip's war is, is a lot the same. We talked about how, um, a precedent had been set uh, in terms of, of British colonists and Indians. We're going to draw a line and say, "Don't cross that line." You cross that line, we're going to we're going to we're going to beat you up, um, and we're going to keep drawing the line and moving it and draw the line and move it. Um, and the same thing is going to happen in New England. All right, um, King Philip. King Philip was actually a a chief named Metacomet, um, and and. What we're going to see is, is in Massachusetts, um, they are going to basically go and arrest three Wampanoag Indians, all right? They're going to arrest three Wampanoag Indians. They're going to arrest, try, and execute three Indians, 
Um, the Indians, the Wampanoag Indians, again, led by, by Metacomet. It's the colonists who call him King Philip. You know, we already talked about creativity, right? Uh, I guess Metacomet's too difficult. But anyway, um, Metacomet's going to lead a, 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 a war against uh, these people, trying to get them back for what they did. Um, and it's going to lead to to this King Philip's War. It's going to be a relatively short war. Okay, it's going to be a relatively short war. And 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 it's the same thing with the AP Wars and all the other wars that, that, that we've talked about slash will talk about in dealing with the natives. Uh, what you need to know about King Philip's War is that it is going to draw the line in in uh, in New England at the Appalachian Mountains. All right, it's going to draw the line. It's going to basically kick all the Indians west of of the Apps, which is going to give all of New England that is habitable um, at this point. And remember, nobody's past the Appalachian Mountains yet, but it's going to give all of that to the colonists. Um, and 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 again, you know. It kicks out the it kicks the Indians out of New England, um, and 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 it continues that precedent of draw a line and push um, that, that that we will continue to see. All right, um, I just realized that I I should have talked about the halfway covenant back when I talked about um, Anne and Roger. A lot of people, a lot of people are are following Roger and Anne, and and they're leaving the Puritan Church because it's so difficult to to maintain that that strict behavior um, and 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 adherence to the church, um, and and so numbers in the church were dwindling significantly. Uh, the church is going to create this halfway covenant in an attempt to bring people back to the church. Um, and, and they're going to basically say, hey, yo, we'll meet you halfway. Um, you don't have to come every day, but come when you can, pay your tithe, uh, and, and, and we will welcome you back. Um, and, and, you know, while we kind of sit here and we say maybe that's a, a little bit, you know, too late at this point, um, you got to remember these people, these Puritans and separatists, they left everything they knew um, to follow their own religious, you know, ideology and, and to come over here and, and be dismissed by, by the church that they left everything for um, was tough. And so when that same church provides a halfway covenant um, saying, hey, yo, come on back, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to going to jump in. Um, and, and, and it is going to work, but as we'll see, once we get to the great awakening, perhaps it was a little bit too late. All right. So let's keep rolling here. We talked about KP's war. Yeah. Let's talk a little, uh, class conflict, shall we? Cool. Um, if you guys think back, um, one of the things, uh, we, I know we talked about it with Maryland, um, and, as well as some other places, uh, but if you came over and you didn't have money, excuse me, you didn't have money, you didn't have any real discernible wealth, uh, you're going to have to live in the back country with the savages. Okay. Um, what we're looking at here is, is the back country is the interior. Okay. The interior um, is, is closer to, to the fall line. It is typically rocky. Um, you've got to deal with Indians out there. Um, and, and, and again, you know, we're going to see the poor colonists being forced out into the interior. Meanwhile, the tidewater is, is going to be right along the coast. It's going to be right along the rivers. Um, I know that you probably can't see very well on, on this map, but hopefully I'll be back in class by the block then we can pull it up and really kind of hyper analyze these maps. Um, but, but it's better connected. They've got better roads. They've got, uh, more trading avenues, whether it be roads or, 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 or rivers or straight up being on the coast. Um, and so they're going to have the opportunity to make a lot more money. All right. Um, 
what we're seeing here, the reason why I bring up Maryland is, is because we talked about the indentured servants. Once the indentured servants came over and their uh, period of servitude was complete, they're having to move back in the back country or the interior. Um, and, and we're going to see how that's going to cause problems here uh, with, with uh, Bacon's Rebellion. All right. Bacon's Rebellion goes down in, in Virginia. All right. Here's old Nathaniel Bacon in his sweet threads, right? Um, he does have some of the sweetest facial hair in all of U.S. history, but that's not important for us. Um, Bacon's going to come over, and, and he's a little late to the game uh, in terms of, of, of getting over here, um, especially in, in, in the, the Jamestown, Virginia area. Um, he gets over, he comes over with wealth. He's got some, some money. Um, but he doesn't, he, by the time that he shows up, there's not a lot that, that he wants in, in, in regard to land and, and whatnot. And so he decides that he wants a much larger piece of land. He moves back into the interior. Okay. Now he's going to get on you know, uh, he's going to get into politics and, and kind of being, be the pseudo representative for the interior, uh, when it comes to, uh, Jamestown politics. All right. Um, when he's at, at one of the meetings, um, he is, is going to hang out, uh, and, or he's going to wait for, for the meeting to get done. And he wants to talk to a guy, William Berkeley. William Berkeley is the governor of Virginia at this point. And, and he and Berkeley have a conversation about things that are going on, primarily issues with Indians in the interior. And, and so, again, it's a he said, he said issue. Uh, Bacon leaves the meeting believing that he has been authorized to create a commissioned military to go fight Indians. What that means, commissioned, means getting paid. All right. Uh, now again, it's a he said he said. Uh, Berkeley, you will see it here in a bit that that he <laughs> he either reneges on 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 his promise to pay, or he never said it to begin with. Uh, regardless of of situation, Bacon's going to go back out into the interior, uh, put together a, a a small militia, and and man, he just starts stacking Indian skulls. Uh, now. After a couple weeks of, of doing this, um, his men want to get paid. He's going to go back into Jamestown. Excuse me. He's going to go back into Jamestown, knock on the door of, of William Berkeley and say, hey, yo, check out all these. The, uh, you got to imagine that I'm holding scalps, right? Check out all these scalps. We've been killing Indians. Uh, you just got safer in the, in the interior or I'm sorry, in the tide water because the interior has just covered you um, and you're not going to have to deal with Indians. Um, Berkeley's like, cool, and shuts the door. Bacon knocks on the door again, says, no, nah, you got to pay. Um, and Berkeley has absolutely no interest in pay. What Bacon's going to do is he's going to say, all right, you're not going to pay me. You're going to have to be the one that tells my guys that you're not paying them. So he goes back in the interior, uh, rounds up all his dudes, and, and we kind of see the artist portrayal here. Um, and, and here they come, pop, 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 you know, drummer boy in hand um, to, to go and say, hey, yo, you owe us money. They get to Bacon's house. Bacon refuses to answer the door. Um, these dudes are pissed, and so when they leave, they uh, they burn down Jamestown. You know, burn the whole city to the ground. Um, this is going to be a big deal, all right? Bacon's Rebellion is incredibly important for the, the, the trajectory of, of slavery, really. Um, because what we're going to see is... is these people who are living in the interior, a lot of these guys here that, that are living in the interior and that joined into Bacon's militia were, were former indentured servants. And, and as they stood there at Berkeley's house and, and you know, this dude's not going to even answer them, much less pay them, uh, they start looking out and they're like, yeah, we built this town. All right, we built this town and now they don't want to help us out. And, and so, yeah, they burned that sucker to the ground. 
Um, the reason why Bacon's Rebellion is important, though, is is because enough people recognize that that as long as we continue on with this this policy of indentured servitude, and once the the the, the period of service is done, kicking those people out into the interior, the back country. Um, you're gonna have, you know, this 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 odd formation of those who have and those who have not, and it's always gonna create this class conflict struggle. Um, because of Bacon's Rebellion, what we're going to see is um, we're going to see the colonies get rid of of indentured servitude. All right, and once you know the the the, the practice of indentured servitude goes away, that's going to put a much heavier reliance on on African slavery, um, and we'll talk more about that here shortly. I'm not going to talk about the bloody flux. Not here. We'll get there. Yeah, you got questions about bloody flux. What is the bloody flux? It's awesome. It's like one of my favorite ways to die in colonial America, um, but not for not for the YouTube lecture, right? Um, so, yeah, let's keep cranking. Let's go middle colonies here. Um, middle colonies. Uh, we got William Penn. All right, you're looking at this dude. You're probably like, yo, I know him. I ate him for breakfast. Uh, the Quaker oatmeal guy. Yeah, that's him, man. Uh, William Penn. <coughs> mm, excuse me. William Penn. Uh, Penn came over here and establishes Pennsylvania. All right. Pennsylvania. Um, he sets up uh, largely for his own religious group uh, called Quakers. Okay, it's middle colonies. They're 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 super tolerant of all religions, uh, but it's really kind of you know that 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 created runaway spot for for Quakers. Quakers were a a you know for the time period uh, a, a religious extreme or an extreme religious group. Um, they got their name because the spirit would take them over and they'd start shaking and quaking and well, people call them Quakers. Um, incredibly uh, peaceful individuals, all right? Uh, very, very honest, very, you know, forthright and, and, and intentional in their behavior. Um, the, uh, the Quakers, when I tell you that they were just totally peaceful. Um, they wouldn't even carry guns around Indians, which was, was unheard of. Okay. Um, in fact, you know, a Quaker comes up to you, you could just jack them right across the face and they're going to be like, Oh, okay. Peace be with you. Bye now. Um, yeah, that, that's just how they were. Um, William Penn sets up, uh, again, Pennsylvania religiously for Quakers, but, but it, it all people can come. Um, what's going to be attractive to, to everybody, which is going to add to the diversity of the middle colonies. Um, they're going to have a representative government. There's not going to be any tax that, that supports the church. Um, you know, anybody can own land. Um, the, the economy largely is, is off of, well, Quaker oats, you know, it's going to be grain and oats. Um, those are the two big things, uh, that it's running off. Um, Pennsylvania, super attractive to a lot of people. Um, the the king doesn't really dig it. He doesn't like the fact that, that Penn set up a representative government because that doesn't represent the king. Um, and so Penn got duped. He got, uh, he got called back by the king. Party in your honor. Um, as soon as, as Penn came busting into the, the, the king's chamber saying, yeah, let's party. Um, he was arrested, put on trial, or he was arrested and, and found guilty of treason. Uh, treason is knowingly going against your government. Um, and he would spend the rest of his life in debtor's prison. All right. If you guys have ever seen Aladdin, uh, when Aladdin gets thrown in, in jail and Jafar is dressed up as an old man, um, down there in that like little prison thing where people are like stuck to the walls and whatnot. Yeah. That's like debtor's prison. Um, it's, it's not going to be a happy ending for William Penn. He's going to end up having a paralytic stroke. Um, and, and allegedly was, was, you know, he died after he bled out cause rats ate off his fingers and toes. Yeah, man, it's, it, it's a rough world. Um, but William Penn does set up, uh, Pennsylvania and, and man, it's got the best wrestling in, in, in all the States. So I like Pennsylvania. Um, shout out to Greeley. 
<laughs> uh, let's see here. Yeah. King doesn't like all this stuff that's going on. All right. The king doesn't like all the representative governments. He doesn't like the, the fact that people aren't necessarily following his rule. Um, especially the Puritans and the Separatists. All right. Um, what the king is going to eventually do is, is revoke uh, the Massachusetts Bay Company's charter. Okay, uh, which is directly going to impact Massachusetts and, and, and the greater New England area. What he's going to establish is, is the Dominion of New England. We can see the, the, the seal of, of the Dominion of New England uh, right there. Um, and, and really, I mean, it, the, the seal does a great job of, of giving you the imagery of what the, the king was trying to convey. He wants to tighten his grip on the colonies um, and, and establish, you know, as we can see, you know, everybody's bowing down and paying homage to, to the king. Um, the Dominion of New England is going to be controlled by this guy, Sir Edmund Andros. Okay, um, Andros was a military man. He was a, a devout Anglican, and he is going to rub all the Puritans in, in, in New England all kinds of wrong. Um, the Dominion of New England isn't going to last for very long, um, and that's because... Uh, back in England, there are some big changes. Um, hopefully you guys remember from world history, the glorious revolution, glorious revolution is where William and Mary took over the throne. Um, and it was glorious because allegedly, uh, there was no, there was no blood that was shed in, in this, this, in this overtake. Um, what we're going to see is, is, you know, in the wake of the Glorious Revolution, you're going to see uh, less king control and more parliamentary control. Um, Sir Edmund Andros is, is going to, you know, when the, when the Glorious Revolution goes down, Andros loses all, all power um, and, and, and he actually flees. Um, the people of New England think it's, it's great, um, and, and, excuse me, that they're going to be able to control their own destiny, um, but that's not what happens. Um, Massachusetts becomes a royal colony directly under the, the, the power of, of the crown and parliament. But yeah, that's the loss of the charter. Salem Witch Trial, baby. Woo! All right, Salem Witch Trial. Um, it's not like the Crucible, right? It's not like the Crucible. Um, Salem Witch Trial. Um, you know, there's there's some some real stuff going on with with the Crucible, but um, as I mentioned, some of the classes, the Crucible is a whole lot like you know a Lifetime movie, right? Uh, it's based on 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 actual events, but it gets sideways quick. Um, what was happening was, uh, you know, the, the, the real stuff. You've got Titaba here. Um, she's from the islands, Mon, and, and she is supposed to take care of the preacher's kids. Okay. But, but just like, you know, most kids, uh, they don't want to be told how to live their life. Um, and, and when Titaba, um, you know, makes them upset, they go and they say that Tituba is a witch, all right? Witchcraft does not sit well in the Puritan ideology. Now, what they're going to start doing is is, is having witch trials. Um, it, 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 it's false accusations gone wild, all right? It's false accusations. It's a lack of due process. It is. It shows us the dangers of religious extremism. All right, that's what Salem Witch Trials does, those three things. Um, because what, what ends up happening is, is when Tituba is, is gone, people start realizing, oh man, we can vanquish our enemies if we say that they're witches. Um, and the witch trials were real. Um, you know, there's all kinds of crazy stuff. Like uh, they had this, um, this, this belief that, that witches could breathe underwater. Okay, and so they would basically have like this 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 dunking machine 
Um, and they would, would, you know, say, all right, you're a witch. You know, no, I'm not a witch. And they dunk you underwater for like two, three minutes. They pull you up. If you know, you're probably not alive at that point. I'm like, oh, well, they're faking it. And they dunk them back underneath. Um, and they pull them back up and then, oh, well, this person's dead. People are like, oh my gosh, you know, you killed them. I was like, yeah, they're dead, but at least they're not a witch, right? Um, there were other things, uh, they thought that, that, that witches' bones were, like, stronger than steel. No, they didn't have steel back then, at least not the way that we think of steel today. Um, but you get the, you get the imagery, right? And so they'd lay them down on the street and, like, stack stones on them. Um, and they'd ask them, they'd stack them up. Are you a witch? I'm not a witch. Stack another, another, you know, stack of big stones on them. Are you a witch? I'm not a witch. I'm uncomfortable, but I'm not a witch. Get off me. You know, boom, another stack of stones. And they say, are you a witch? And as soon as the person, ah, and let the air out, man, like you could hear the, 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 the rib cage under all that pressure rocks just starting to crack and people would be horrified and they get the rocks off them. They're like, no, that's what a witch would want you to do. They want you to believe they're making those sounds. It's a witch. And then so you're a grease spot on the, the middle of the street. Um, but hey, at least you're not a witch, right? Um, and so again, it's, it's false accusations and, and a lack of due process. Due process is the procedure of, of determining innocence or guilt. Um, you know, today, largely what kind of is the backbone of our due process is that you're innocent until proven guilty. That's not how it worked here. You were guilty until proven innocent. Why? Because somebody said you were a witch, right? Now, I want us to take a look at this. And again, um, I recognize that you can't really see this on this whiteboard, um, but hopefully we'll, you know, I'll be back by block day. And so we can kind of, again, hyperanalyze all these, these images. Um, but what we're seeing is it's more class conflict. Um, the people who live on the main street, you know, that would, you know, again, we talked about interior versus tidewater, right? On the macro level. The back country is the interior. The, 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 the coastal region is, is the uh, tidewater. That's like the macro level. You can also take it to the micro level to, to individual towns. People who live on Main Street, you know, they have the best uh, means of, of, of trade and making money. And so, you know, Main Street would be like your tidewater. And the further back you live away from it, uh, the less opportunity you have. Um, if we take a look at this map, um, all the people who are being accused of, of being witches live on the main street. The people who are accusing them live in the back country. Why? It's because the people in the back country owe the people on main street money. And if they die trying to prove that they were not a witch, their debts are, are forgiven. Um, and, and if you're sitting there going, yo, Monty, why didn't people just say, okay, yeah, fine, I'm a witch. Well, if you did say, you know, if you're like, yo, Monty, you're a witch. That's right, I am a witch. And suddenly people would be like, no more witch trials. Monty's a witch. You got to go. All right. You got to go. Um, and, and I get kicked out of town. And the reason why people aren't eager to do that is because, again, we're talking about Puritans and Separatists. They've left everything back in England to try to live this, this, this life here. And, and to be banished from that society is almost worse than death. All right. Um, but yeah, that's the English trials. The Carolinas. All right. Carolinas. Carolinas are going to get established here. Um, initially, the Carolinas were, were just one. Okay, um, let me look at my map here. Seventeen twenty nine is when we'll see the Carolinas split. Um, but the Carolinas initially were 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 created, um, and and the the they're gonna be pretty uh, pretty loyal to the crown um, economically. It's, it's a lot of, of uh, rice. It's a lot of indigo. Um, that's what we're seeing a lot of uh, coming out of the Carolinas. Um, and it's all being traded out of the, uh, the big port city of Charlestown. Named after 
King Charles, today we call it Charleston. Um, and, and, and so we're going to see, um, that, that, um, this is, is going to be a huge, uh, hub for, for trade. All right. Um, now we're eventually, like I said, going to see the split between, between, uh, South Carolina and North Carolina. Um, and, and, and we'll get to that later on. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk slavery here. Okay. Um, slavery, it is growing and it's growing, uh, in African slavery specifically is growing, uh, much more popular after or in the aftermath of, of Bacon's rebellion. Remember Bacon's rebellion, uh, ended for all intents and purposes, ends, uh, the, the, the practice of indentured servitude. All right. Um, the slave trade was big. Um, and, and incredibly divisive and, and man, just, just insane. Um, but really what, what we want to look at here is, is essentially it is triangular trade. Okay. Triangular trade. Um, and we're going to put a uh, special in, uh, emphasis on, on the middle passage. Okay. Um, so Europe. Okay, this is where it starts. Okay, from Europe to Africa. Okay, now, first off, Africa in the Dark Ages, for when the European Dark Ages, Africa was booming. Africa had, had you know, some of the most literate populations um, ever. Um, it had, had uh, you know, I mean, you talk about literacy, libraries, holy cow, massive libraries, massive universities, people from China. Uh, were coming to to West Africa uh, for for studies. Um, lots and lots of gold. Um, the problem is is there began a lot of fighting. Okay, um, war started started breaking out right around the same time that that, that Europe was coming out of its dark ages. Um, and the Europeans, being fantastic at divide and conquer, are going to absolutely take advantage of this. Um, what we're going to see in the first leg of this triangle, from Europe to Africa, from Europe to Africa, are going to go guns and liquor. Okay, guns and liquor. Um, and they're going to trade guns and liquor for prisoners of war. Okay. Um, now, the uh, what they're going to do is immediately they're not going to bring them over here. They're going to take them out to these islands, the Barrier Islands, out off the coast of Africa, and and they're going to you know basically catalog all of these these prisoners of war. They want to know you know what what tribe you belong to, what language you speak, your religion, all that. And then at that point they're going to shuffle you um, so that when you get put on a boat, you're not with people who are like you. Um, the reason why they want to put, they, they want to shuffle that, they want you to push you with your enemies is because then you won't necessarily have the opportunity or the ability to overthrow, uh, the, 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 